All right, time to take notes on lesson 7.2, adding unit fractions. Okay, let's get started. Before we read the word problem, I want to draw your attention to what a unit fraction actually is. So, a unit fraction tells the part of the whole that one piece represents. A unit fraction always has a numerator of one. Okay, so let's put that in the context of a word problem. Look at the very top. Emilio cut a sandwich into eight equal pieces and ate one piece. He has seven eighths of the sandwich left. Emilio, Emilio put each remaining piece on a snack plate. How many snack plates did he use? What part of the sandwich did he put on each plate? Each piece of the sandwich is one-eighth of the whole. One-eighth is called a unit fraction because it tells the part of the whole that represent that one piece represents. A unit fraction always has a numerator of one. So let's look down at the example. So he cut the sandwich into eight pieces, right? Seen over here. So, oh, and there's the PC8 down here. Okay, so now they want us to write 7 eighths as a sum of the unit fractions. Now remember, unit fractions represent one piece. It has one as a numerator. So, let's see here. There's their bar model, right? One whole, and there's the 7 eighths representing the 7 pieces that are left. So 7 eighths, if we write the unit fraction, which is what they're showing, 1 eighth plus one-eighth, plus one-eighth, plus one-eighth, plus one-eighth, plus one-eighth, plus one more eighth, right? That all adds up to seven-eighths. So Emilio used, well, if you put each one of these pieces, one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven. You had seven little pieces, right? And he put each one of those pieces on a plate. He used seven plates. He put blank of a sandwich on each plate. Each plate. He put one of the eight pieces on each plate. Okay, let's keep going with unit fractions. So, they might ask, use unit fractions to write an equation. So, if we had five, six as our sum... We would use unit fractions, remember one is always the numerator, to make the sum. So look at five six. The unit fraction would be one six, one in the numerator, and how much is one piece, one six? Well, we're going to have to add it up five times to get a numerator of five. One, two, three, four. Five. Now, just like we learned in chap in 7.1, right, the denominators stay the same when you add fractions. It's just the numerators that are following the operation. So here are our unit fractions. They add up and give us 5 6. Look, let's look at 3 eighths. The unit fraction, 1 is always the numerator. What does one piece represent? One eighth. You would have to add that three times to get three eighths. One, two, three. So here are my unit fractions. One plus one plus one equals three. So one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth equals three eighths. Okay. Now, this isn't the only way to make 5, 6, and 3 eighths, right? So let's keep using our unit fractions, but we're going to make them different ways. Check it out. So if we were going to make 6 tenths using unit fractions, of course, the first way we would do it is just simply using the unit fractions and adding them up as many times as we need to make the numerator. In this case, to make six tenths, we need to add the unit 
fraction six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, another way to make six tenths would be to combine some of these unit fractions, right? Group them together. So we could take this, add that, that would be two tenths, plus take these two, that would be two tenths, and then we can even group these together and bring those down two tenths. Two tenths plus two tenths plus two tenths still gives you six tenths. Denominator stays the same. The numerators add up to six. Another way you could do it, how about we pair up this two tenths and this two tenths? That would make four tenths. And then you could add in this one, two tenths. Two tenths plus four tenths equals six tenths. So there's many different ways you can write an equation and get a fraction. You can use basic unit fractions at the very top. You can combine some of those unit fractions in different ways. I bet you could think of another couple ways to make six tenths. So, if you need to watch the video again, go for it to learn about unit fractions. Otherwise, here comes your three practice problems. Practice problems. Show two different ways to make these fractions. All right? So, you're going to make three eighths using unit fractions two different ways. Here's the second problem. Four-fifths. You're making four-fifths two different ways. And the last problem, five-ninths. You're showing us how to make five-ninths using unit fractions two different ways. All right, have a great night. See you tomorrow.